Hey there everyone, Hatesh here and welcome to another video. In this video, we're going to talk about race condition. Now this race condition is really, really important and in this video, I will walk you through that how you can utilize some of the tooling feature in the Golang. Now so far, whatever we have learned, we saw that there was no issue, no error that we are facing. Now we are in a position that we understand a bit about the weight groups, we understand a bit about the mutex. So let's go ahead, move forward that how in the real world situation you go into the race condition and why we get into that and how we can solve the issue. First, a brief discussion, what is this race condition? It's really simple, but if you're gonna read the docs, you're gonna find it very confusing. Now the idea is really simple. There are multiple go routines which are there. So these are, we can very loosely, not precisely, but very loosely can say there are multiple threads that are going on. And this memory space is just one thing. So if you try to write into this memory space using one thread and another thread at the same time comes in and says, hey, I want to write into the same memory space, obviously we are going to get into the issues. In the previous example, we were not able to see that, but in this example, we will actually catch that up, not by having the error, but rather having a race tooling with the Golang. Now, if, be, if you will be writing any kind of Go routines, knowing in, deep, in detail and in depth about the race condition is like unavoidable, you need to have this. And after watching this video, I promise this is going to be the easiest topic, at least for conceptual uh, part of that. Let's go ahead and get started with that. I've already created a new folder, which is 27 mutex and await groups, and we're going to write code in that. I've already initialized it, mod initialized, and all of basic file. We are so far into the course, I don't think so. This shouldn't be an, uh, this should be an issue. So first, let's go ahead and have a package, and inside the package, we are going to have a main method. So I'm gonna go ahead and say, hey function, please give me a main. There we go. And just like always, we are going to simply have a fumpt, and we're gonna call this one as race, uh, condition and let's say dash and of course a website name probably okay I save this and this has no issue now we're gonna go ahead and create a couple of go routines uh, we're not gonna create them into separate methods yes that is definitely a viable option but I want to show and touch a little bit onto these uh, ifies uh, immediately invoked function no they are not a property of JavaScript any language or every language can have this one if they support it. It's really the simplest method that there are some anonymous functions or lambda functions and you're just executing them immediately. That's it, that's pretty much it. So how do we do that? We simply go ahead and say, I will have a function. I will not have a name of this. I will definitely have a body of this function and I would like to run that immediately. And that's, that's basically it. And we're gonna go ahead and say that these are not basic function, they will be go routines. So I obviously have to put up go uh, before them. And I would like to have, let's just say three of them are good enough in this case. Okay, now apart from that, in this main method, I would like to go ahead and create a check on the score. So let's just say we are going to have a score. Now this score can store any of the values. We're gonna go very basic and we're gonna say this is integer. And the default value that it's going to store is zero. It can store one, two or anything. And eventually I would like to push more values into this score. So I will use go routines for that. Okay, let's go ahead and work with that. So this go routine can go ahead and just add the values. But before that, since I would like to know that which of the go routine is actually going to do that or which one is actually running here, I would like to call this one as one routine or go routine, whatever you say that. And then I'll say, hey score, I would like to go ahead and append a value. So this first function one actually pushes one into that. And the same thing is going to happen into the second go routine as well. So this one is going to just do exactly the same. So we can go ahead and copy paste that. Now, obviously we would like to change this a little bit. So we'll say that, hey, not like that. Hey, you will be two and you will be responsible for pushing a two into that. Now, obviously this brings us an issue that we are firing up the go routines. So we saw that already that there is nobody who is going to just allow to me to run all these routines. Nobody is there in my main method who waits for these go routines to come back and report back for me. And we saw that using the sync package, we can actually go ahead and, uh, and have and address this situation. Now in this case, I'm gonna go up here at the top, not outside the main method, but up here. And I'm gonna go ahead and create a weight group for me. And I told you that weight group usually are created as a pointer and uh, we will be using the same strategy in this one. Last one we didn't use that, but this time I want to go ahead uh, with exact practices that you'll be using while writing the go routine. So use an ampersand and we will say that, hey, I want to use the sync package and through the sync, I'll create my weight group. And this is exactly how you do that. 
Now we will be saying that in these functions, we want to pass on these weight groups. So let's go ahead and pass on this weight group. And we know that also we have to pass on the type. So we have already studied that in string, whatever it is. In this case, since this is a reference, I need to go ahead and pass on a pointer. What type of pointer? This is a pointer which is going to be of type sync dot dot weight group. And obviously now the signature of the function is changed. I can actually go ahead and pass on this weight group. Now I got to do this for every single of them. So let's go ahead and copy this and paste it up here and paste it up here as well. And now I can go ahead and say, hey, weight group, I'll pass you that. And here also I'll pass on the weight group. Now, interestingly, once the weight group is being passed on, I have a couple of things to do. First, I need to notify my main method that, hey, I have enabled the weight group. So in this weight group, you have to wait till all the weight groups who are added into the weight group returns back, finishing up their job. How do we do that? Now, there are a couple of ways how we can do that. Now, notice here, these are the three go routines that we have. I told you the way how we do it is simply go ahead and say, hey, weight group, I want to add one to you. So you have two options. You can go ahead and say, add one. And every single go routine, you can just go ahead and say, hey, weight group, I would like to add one more. Now, not exactly correctly, but you can assume it a little bit like this, that whenever you call this dot add, it actually pushes one value inside this uh, weight package here. Now you can go ahead and do this, but another way which you're going to see a lot and majority of the time uses uh, that on the very top, you just define that how many go routines are there. So this is also totally valid. Again, there is no like a performance related issue or anything like that. Feel free to use any one of that. Okay. Now that the weight group is being uh, passed, it is my responsibility to pass on a signal that, hey, this weight group is done. So I need to go ahead and do this every single place wherever I'm using it. And there we go, weight group, and we are gonna say done. Now we are good and happy, so let's go ahead and say that, hey, I want to go ahead and uh, copy this. And I also want to paste this up here. So there we go. Is it all done? Uh, seems like, seems a good option that we are able to just append uh, all these scores. So this one is appending the score of one, this is two, and this should be passing on three. So technically, in my slice, as of now, we are having starting with zero. As soon as this go routine runs, this will write or add one to it. Once this go routine runs, it will just add two to my slice. And this go routine will add three to my slice. I have also incorporated the WG weight, which is weight group dot weight, so that all the go routines get an equal chance to come back and report to the base. Yeah, that's nice. Okay, let's go ahead and try to run this one and see that once everything is done, uh, what happens with this uh, slice up here? So we're gonna say, hey, I'm gonna go ahead and say print, and let's go ahead and print the score as it is. Save that, no big deal. And if I go ahead and try to say go run, and I'm gonna just run whatever the files are present, so I go ahead and do that. Now notice here carefully that this is the race condition, okay? So two R, so first, the guy who come who just does the job and come back is the two. So this go routine actually does a job first. And the guarantee of which go routine will come back first is never because these are just independent kind of threads. Yes, uh, calling them thread is not good. We should always call them go routine, but it's easier for me to convey you the fact. So this thread actually goes back and returns very first. Then the first one and the and the second one comes last. And notice here, this is how we are pushing the value into it. So zero was by default. Then we go ahead and say, hey, third is actually pushing it up uh, one here. And again, my bad, I should be naming them a little bit better. So let's try this one more time. And again, the order is not guaranteed. That is all what I wanted to convey you with this. So there we go. So third one, then the second one and the one. And again, if I try to run this again, the order might change, might not change. There is no guarantee on that. Okay. So this is good and everything is working. So where is the race condition? Everything is working fine. No, my dear friend, not everything is working fine. On the surface level, it might look like that this is all working good. And in the previous video also, we saw that everything is working fine, but this is where uh, you will be making mistake if you're using the cloud resources, you are not utilizing it in a better way. So you can go ahead and pass on a dash dash race flag, and this will actually go ahead and analyze for yourself that whether your program is having some of the race condition or not. And when I go ahead and run this, Voila, there are so much, there is so much that is happening. It says that, hey, uh, if you try to run this one, 
uh, there is so much that is happening so let me try to show you that first it says warning data race so there is a race which is being created in your program which is trying to access a memory and everybody is trying to do that that is why it is creating an issue and if you see that uh, that hey go routine 8 it gives you a lot of lot of uh, inside detail that which one is creating the issue and on top of that notice here we are exiting with a status of 66 keep that as a note you'll be seeing this throughout whatever the application you are building up now it took me a little bit while that why uh, we are receiving status 66 and that's when i started digging up into the data race and all these conditions and weight groups and all of that uh, since there were not many of the programmers in the project that i was working on i was basically kind of alone who was working on that so it took me a while once you have any superior or who is an experienced guy in the golang it's much more easier but uh, this took me a long while so what is the solution of this it's pretty easy it's pretty easy that's exactly where the mutex come in remember in the last video we talked about this and this time we're going to follow the exact same syntax of the mutex so let's go ahead and call this one as mute for mutex and again as i told you previous video we didn't use the pointers this time we will be using them so we will be saying hey i want to use the sync package and from that i want to go ahead and say i need a mutex and that's it a mutex reference is being created now do you want to pass on this mutex almost everywhere yes of course that's the job of the mutex that whenever there is a write operation especially the write uh, you go ahead and use that now it should be used in the write in the read cases also but read case is not that much important uh, there are different ways to handle this don't worry I'll, sh I'll share that as well so let's modify the signature of this uh, function and say that hey comma i'll pass on a mutex and that will be of type pointer because i'll pass on a reference and i'll say sync dot mutex so there we go now my function signature is being modified i'll copy this and let's go ahead and paste this uh, here and here also so let's go ahead and paste that now I can go ahead and say that, hey, I will pass you this mutex here. And that is why exactly we use a pointer here. So you get the idea so that I don't want to pass on a, a copy of it. I exactly go ahead and lock my resources. As I told you, this is a mutually exclusive uh, exclusion lock. Whenever you try to access a memory, you should lock it so that all the time you are performing operations on that memory, nobody else can come in and just mess around with the job. Imagine uh, you are, you, it, it is a bank account and one of your thread and comes in and says, hey, I want to add $1,000 in this account and another account that comes up and uh, says, hey, I want to take $1,000 out of that account. And if you're not locking that memory, you are definitely going to create a lot of issues in that kind of banking application. Anyways. You get the idea. Now, how do we use this mutex? It is super simple. The moment you are performing any kind of write operation, it's not just about append. This is just a mere example. But any operation that you are performing, you just go ahead and have to lock this one. And it is also your responsibility that you go ahead and unlock the operation or the memory or the resource, not the operation. OK, let's go ahead and copy this. So this will be coming up at a couple of places. and. Uh, here as well and now we can go ahead and unlock this so let's go ahead and hit an enter and here also once this is all done so there we go told you it's really not that much of a difficult concept once you understand the basic foundation of it so there we go we are uh, locking it unlocking it we are also using the weight groups to pass on a signal of done and this should actually resolve our issue let's go ahead and try to run with the race condition and there we go now it says nothing Whenever the race flag actually gives you nothing, that is always a good sign that, hey, uh, nothing is going wrong and all of that. Now, there is a slight uh, modification that you can do, although you don't need it. At this point, if the race conditions are all good and done, you will get a great performance and you don't need to do this. But since the topic we touched in the last video, not only just mutex, you can also go ahead and create the read write mutex. Now, if you are using the read write mutex, as go ahead and save this, this will create some issues because this mutex is of type read write and the function signature you're using is this one so we need to go ahead and have this one up here and this one so change the signature to read write there we go nice and easy now what is the role of this one nothing nothing really nothing uh, at the case whenever you are performing any write operation you do exactly same as you have been doing but in addition whenever you are performing a read and notice here the read operation is being performed onto this one so we can actually directly go ahead and lock this resource so i can go ahead and say hey mutex i will perform a read lock here 
and uh, I, I'm gonna go ahead and say, hey Mutex, I'm gonna just unlock this. So there is a read unlock and there we go. Now what this is going to do, and there are a couple of places you can actually paste this, you can say whenever I'm trying to read this. So here I'm trying to read this, I can go ahead and place it up here as well. Uh, different kind of a syntax, in most of the cases you are going to see that whenever you're performing the read operation, uh, then you do this. So, And in some cases you're gonna see that uh, people actually put that onto the resource, this is where. And this is where things get a little bit tricky. Now this is a resource where you are actually declaring and all of that. No, this is not a right place to go ahead and put up your read log and all of that. If you want to go ahead, let me go ahead and try to have one more of the signature. And I'll show you that what exactly and where is the best way to perform all of this. In this go routine, we are not going to go ahead and perform any lock or any updation or anything like that. Let's go ahead and remove this. All we are going to do in this one up here is we are either trying to loop through all the values or we are trying to go ahead and perform this. This is the place where you go ahead and perform this read lock. So let's go ahead and move this and let's paste this up here and similarly we are going to say hey mutex go ahead and perform a read unlock. Okay so again just repeating the fact if you're trying to lock the resource directly that is not good. You should always be locking the resource when you're trying to read that. <laughs> Don't put it on the source. Okay, but again, the question still remains, what is this read lock and what is this read unlock? Let me just try to answer that in the easiest possible manner. We know that at the time whenever we are writing something into the memory, the lock is really, really necessary because if another thread comes in or routine comes in and write into that, we are getting into a mess. But at the time of, uh, at the time of reading, that kind of strict lock is not really necessary. So if anything comes, any thread comes into writing that, surely we'll lock it. But if any thread or multiple threads comes into the same resource and try to read that resource, we are going to definitely, totally, 100% allowing that. And that's what this read write mutex comes in. Now this becomes a little bit of the messy, so I haven't seen that much being used, but yeah, it is there. Now what will happen if uh, somebody is reading into our memory and another thread comes in and say, hey, I want to write something into that. In that case, it is the job of this read write mutex to throw away all the threads routines which are trying to read that. And once everything is gone out of the space or that particular zone scope, then you are allowed, your thread is allowed to write the memory until the time it is writing into the memory, no thread will be allowed to read from the memory. Again, this is really important. It's more important than uh, just re reading the code and stuff. Understanding this concept, and especially this one is, because this is the powerful one, and this makes Golang absolutely insanely powerful. So this concept is super important for you to understand. And again, if you want to check it one more time, let's go ahead and do that. And we see that there is no race condition, there is no problem at all. So just keep this in mind. Whenever you are performing these read operation, then these read logs can be performed and that is fine. And if you try to put it up here, that is technically not correct, but I've seen in a couple of codes that they are actually doing it. Not that they are too wrong, it's okay, but yeah, I think this is more uh, conceptual explanation. I could be wrong as well. I just digged up into the documentation and I found this is the best, but I could be wrong as well. Okay, so if you found something better or you find any great explanation or something, just let me know in the comment section. We are a community. We are all trying to learn something here together, of course. So let me know in the comment section and I'm going to surely catch you up in the next video.